Good morning, Chris Diamatopoulos. Did I do okay on your name, bud? It was perfect. You got it perfect, man. Wow. You're an honorary Greek for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you play Mo in the new Three Stooges movie, so the rules here on The Breakfast Club is you need to be in character the entire interview. <laughs> you know, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you, Chris, my father, I mean, he had me watch Three Stooges from the time I could conceive of television. Wow. Every new year when they do in the marathons, we were all over it. Oh, that's great. So yeah, this well, is special. I, I, I grew up much the same way, actually. I was a, a real Stooge fan, so when I found out about this movie, and then ultimately when I finally booked the job, it was uh, the biggest success of my life. And it had to be a fun movie, part to prepare for. Oh, it was incredible. I mean, listen, draw, listen, how many things have we done in our childhood habitually that we realized we were wasting our time on that would never come in handy as adults? Well, this <laughs> one did. You know what I mean? I got to turn into a kid again. All of the stuff that I loved doing as a kid, entertaining my friends in school that used to get me put in the corner or out in the hallway, now I'm getting to do it in a movie and I'm getting paid for it. It's unbelievable. Speaking of, your son is what, almost two years old now? He's uh, about 18 months, yeah. Yeah. At what age do you think you'll show him this movie and how are you going to deal with him trying to imitate the moves you do in <laughs> uh, it? I, I, may, I, may, I may get worse father of the month club here. Um, I, I don't know when I'm going to show him the movie, but he's been watching The Stooges since he was six months. <gasps> really? It's the, it's the only thing that he sits still for. No, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's funny. We, you know, we put him in the high chair to feed him and he gets a little squirmy and we try Elmo, we try Baby Einstein, he's squirmy and squirmy and then The Stooges comes on. And boom, he, he stops. He wants to see Daddy beat himself up. <laughs> I mean, listen, whatever it is, it works. So I'm just not, I'm not switching. You know, Chris, I'd be a stooge the whole time working with Sofia Vergara. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'll tell you, my wife and, and son were on set with me. And my wife looked at me when she saw Sofia and she said, go enjoy, honey. Because what she realized was, dressed as Mo, I didn't stand a chance. And, even, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you this, dr dressed as me, I stood even less of a chance. So, um, and, and, and to be perfectly frank, my wife could go ahead to with Sofia Vergara, but I will say, boy, is Sofia a knockout, and boy, is she a great person, and boy, was she fun to work with. You know, this is funny. You go from playing Sinatra in a TV movie, and then you play Mo in the Stooge movie. <laughs> it, I mean, you're, you're a very versatile actor. Well, geez, thanks a lot. I mean, look, I come from the old school, which is add value where you can. You know, I'm not a comedian. I'm, not, I'm just basically, a, I'm an actor. I'm a working actor. You know, remember back in the day when actors had to act? you know, and change characters. And these days, it seems too often that people are being cast to kind of just play themselves or exaggerated versions of themselves. And not that I have take any, you know, I, I don't take any offense to that or anything, but I just find that the reason I got into the business was to transform. You know, I mean, if I wanted to see myself every day, well, I, I just, I'd be me. So, so getting the opportunity to play these iconic characters has been a real joy, a real, a real honor for me. You know, Frank Sinatra and Robin Williams and Mo and I think that the, the, the more uh, spelled out the character is, the more uh, I can get into it and disappear. What was the toughest part for you making this film? Sustaining the authenticity of the Stooges, because, you know, it's, it's not just the voice. It's not just the mannerisms. It's not just the slaps and the hits. It's making sure that the three of us were in sync doing those things at all times. So whether you're speaking or reacting or hitting or being hit or in a, in, in a scene that's just a, a spoken scene, you can't, as an actor, you have these certain fail-safes. You go to your state of repose, or you go to your, your little go-to reaction. And if you're in a scene and someone does something that you weren't expecting, you have some safety in being able to use, you know, parts of yourself. Well, in this, you couldn't use a single part of yourself. You had to be Mo, Larry, and Curly. So you had to anticipate how they would respond, not only as the characters, but also, you know, internally, viscerally. So I found myself consistently checking myself... At the end of the day, my body was sore, not from the hits, but from the contortion of staying in Mo character. Fans should stay to the very end of the movie, beyond the disclaimer and beyond the credits, if they can. There's a real, a real nice little treat at the end of the movie. Thanks for the heads wow. up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually great. Chris, finally, I hear you do a great Sean Connery impersonation. Would you mind doing it? Okay, well, um, yeah, let's see. Uh, Sean Connery would say something like, Did I ever tell you to wash up, clean your ears, do your homework? No, I respected your privacy, and I taught you self-reliance. <laughs> that is amazing. Now we need to hear a little <laughs> more before you go. Now listen, you mugs. People ain't going to give us a job. we got to go out and get it. Now my idea is this. You see that store over there? Each one of us grab a broom, we go out and sweep in front of the place, see? The boss comes out, sees three conscientious guys, and offers us a job. It's simple. Go on, get gone. Chris Diamantopoulos, thank you so much. Take care, guys.